Sexy Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> I didn't bring the film clip for this, although I did show it when I teach it. Uh, into a game of strip chess with her reflection. Um, even though she eventually wins, she flees from the, the seat in horror because her reflection starts to strip. And she wakes up again and she's sitting at her dressing table uh, getting ready for school, for which, of course, she's late again. Uh, very much a, a tongue-in-cheek um, adaptation of, of both stories. Now, it's been dismissed, both of them have been dismissed as kind of an aberration or maybe as Clance's attempt to um, gather young men as fans or as just plain drivel. But, you know, there's, if you look online, there's a pretty big fan base out there of people who really like it. Um, and the uh, last time I looked, which I have to admit was a while ago, there were more than 100 members of the fan club for this, and they were all in the U.S. I didn't look to see how many of them were men and how many of them were women. I have to admit that. Um, I always consider myself a feminist scholar, and I look at this very much as a commentary on the objectification of women in contemporary culture. Um, I think they do a really good job of depicting all of these characters who in the, in the, the story and in the film for the most part are men, um, very much as, as idealized male fantasy characters. So if you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. There's nobody really little in here. <laughs> so it's definitely no one of those animes for your five-year-old his brother to watch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last two anime I'm going to talk about kind of combine the, this Alice Wonderland imagery with Japanese history and mythology and um, religions. Inuyasha. How many of you know Inuyasha? And I saw somebody dressed in a really cool Inuyasha costume when I came in tonight. Um, but I wasn't thinking fast enough to grab him and say, come to me, talk so you can stand up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, by the very famous Ruko Takahashi, um, the first really well-known popular female manga artist. Um, this is an historical story. Uh, that began as a weekly manga series like most mangas in Japan do in 1997. In 2000, it aired as a 38-episode TV show and later edited, hmm? Ba edited, yeah. There's like I know. Now there's like a gazillion. I know. And, and my shelf keeps growing with the mangas. I have to stop buying them. I'm not allowed to buy any more books. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's been made into a Sony PlayStation game. It's, had, it's been done as a theatrical production, musical. It's, it's extremely popular and has been going for quite a long time. Now, Takahashi is one of the best-known artists she started her career, or the thing that put her on the map is Ursay Yatsura, Princess Love, that wacky alien com, harem comedy um, where our poor, hapless young man gets zapped every time he looks at another girl. Um, <laughs> 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 Koku, which kind of is a role reversal, male, traditional male and female roles in Japan. Um, Rama, one half, another, I mean, her stuff's all pretty much comedy. The story of a young man and his father who go to China, fall in a stream and get cursed. And I never remember which way this works, but I always say that because I never remember. When he's hit with warm water, he turns into a cold water, he turns into a girl. Warm water, he turns back into a boy, and his father becomes a panda bear. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, hilarity does ensue, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. It's a who. 
So she developed some of the best love figures in, in anime and manga. Um, by 1995, a mil hundred million copies of her works have been sold in Japan alone. That's almost one per household. So she is extremely a wealthy and be popular. Um, she does write shoujo manga, but a lot of her manga really crosses over into shonen. Her characters, her, her, her female characters are fairly strong-willed. Um, and independent, and um, and their actions and appearances reflect that. Now, like Magic Knight Rayer, Inuyasha uses the premise of a young girl and her cat to tell their story, the Alice story. We have Kagome, who is a 15-year-old Japanese schoolgirl, complete with her little sailor suit. Uh, trying to rescue her pet cat, she falls down a well and ends up in 16th century Japan. <clears throat> a place where mythical and magical monsters abound. She meets the story's title character, Inuyasha, a dog-eared demon, half-demon, he's only a half-demon, um, who in a previous life she had impaled in a tree with arrows. Hmm? Kikyo, yes, as Kikyo. Now, as Kikyo, she was tasked with, with defending or guarding the jewel of the four souls, which gets broken up and distributed to the four winds because this is such a powerful jewel, it has the ability to turn a human into a demon and to amplify demon's power. So she didn't want Inuyasha to get hold of it. Um, she frees Inuyasha before she understands who she was in her previous life. And they kind of have a love-hate relationship as they find a partnership <laughs> to go find all these pieces of the jewel. Along the way, they meet a whole lot of interesting characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mistress Centipede here. Whoa, that's creepy. Hmm? That's, that Centipede's creepy. Yeah, and then we have our, our Mistress Spider here who weaves a web of hair to